Hey, it's Schoolio if you don't know, and it is time for some more of the long run where we are playing the longest journey. Last time, puzzles sure did happen. And, um, hopefully we've all learned from this experience. Uh, so this time we're, um, I believe last time we ended up with a key. Yes, we ended up with this key. Let us not speak of how I got that key. Uh, let's go use it. Once this train stops. Key obtained, but duck lost. Well, du duck had to give its life for the greater good? Question mark. I gotta go. In a dang way. We should be able to use the key on this fuse box. Well, this looks pleasant. One of the fuses is just literally melted. It's a switch. I'd venture a guess and say it has something to do with switching the power on and off. The heat's caused this one to melt. I don't think it works anymore. The cable's almost completely severed. It would probably be easy to pull it out, provided I have some kind of protection against the electricity. Well, we do have this glove. It has a big hole in it. Maybe we can patch this hole. Yeah, we sure can. At least this puzzle was not so ridiculous. So, something just happened. Dang, more key! Light up! Hell, it gone dead on me now. I'm going to have to fix that sign proper this time round, uh-huh. I just need me a ladder and some tools from the basement. All right, later, bud. Shambling off. We can probably go in now. It's locked. Or not. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think the same key is going to work again, especially considering the fact that we don't have it anymore. Uh, maybe we can use this push pin on the entrance now? Okay. Well. So one other option has just opened up. Is there any more to this screen? There is. When's the last time somebody picked up the garbage? Smells like moldy caramel popcorn and bingo cherry cola. Disgusting! Hmm. It's a mountain of garbage. It sure is. Uh, exit. Kinda wish that, what, what? uh... I got something on my face? Is no, my hair you okay? Yeah, you're what are you fine. looking at? Calm down. Okay. Okay. 
Well, that was fun. Uh, what about this door? There's no doorknob. It's impossible to open it from this side. I mean, that stands to reason. Usually fire doors are like that. It's the theater's fire exit. It's a fire alarm and a smoke detector. And a smoke detector. I'm sure that's going to be relevant information. What about the shadow? It reminds me of something, but I just can't put my finger on it. I feel an uncontrollable urge to raise my hands, though. The shadow's being cast by those garbage bags. Hmm. Yeah, that is a bit unsettling, isn't it? Let's see, anything else to interact with? So we have the trash can, we have a smoke detector here connected to this fire alarm. It's pretty obvious that we're going to have to make a fire in the trash can, but what can we make a fire with? Well, this seems like the obvious answer. All right, somebody's coming. Hey, those blazes, we got us a fire. Well, that was an idea, but uh, not a sufficient one. Oh. Hey, you! Yeah, you! Hands up! Spread your legs! And do the monkey! <laughs> the hell? Small guy, he sure makes a big racket. Yeah, you hands up, spread your legs, and do the monkey. <laughs> it's just a delivery, like, and do the monkey. <laughs> So I wasn't expecting that to work, but I'm going to guess that this combined with this noise and that shadow is going to incite something right, to happen. somebody's coming! Hey, old blazes, we got us a fire! Now, where's that voice yep. coming from? Show yourself! I ain't scared of no guy who don't have the guts to show himself, uh huh? Okay, well that was a step closer. But it doesn't seem like he noticed the shadow. A mountain of garbage. You, yeah, you, hands up, spread your legs, and do the monkey. If we dance, ah, dance, think we might have all the pieces. Hey, you! Yeah, you! 
hands off. Spread your legs and do the money. All right, somebody's coming. Hey, old blazes, we got yes, we got us a bar. Now, where? Hey, oh, there right we go. There, Mister. Just, just don't, don't you fire that gun now. You hear? I, I'm, I'm sorry I chased you earlier. Freddie, you'll do the monkey for you right now if, if that's what you want, uh huh? He'll do the monkey until you ask him to stop, I reckon. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Hey, you. Yeah, you. In we go. Well, Cortez, I hope this is worth it because that was a pain in the neck. You have no idea what I went through to find you. First... Do you like movies? Sure. Who doesn't? Wait a second. I was trying to tell you that... I don't much like modern movies myself. They're either too loud and expensive or too obscure and self-indulgent. But old movies, really old movies, have a charm and a simplicity that appeals to me. Listen. Please, don't interrupt me again. It's starting to piss me off. But I have never interrupted you, unless I've had something important to say, of course. But go ahead. What is it you wanted to talk about? Why did you make me search all over the city for you? Search for me? I've been here for hours, senorita. I haven't moved. The question ought to be, what made you go out of your way to find me? Uh... We agreed to meet this morning, remember? As I remember it, there was no agreement. I said tomorrow, but you refused. I assumed you weren't interested. I apologize for making myself unavailable, however. Don't give me that. You wanted me to come looking for you again. Actually, no. I, I had to lay low for a few hours. Does it have anything to do with the cop that was staking this place out? No. So it was a good thing I didn't stick my head out the door to look for you then, no? He's gone now. Are you in some kind of trouble with the police? Wait, don't tell me. Immigration. No, senorita. Not the police. There are bigger players than the police. I don't want to know. I'm not getting mixed up with the mob or gangs or anything like that. There's not much you want to be mixed up in at all, is there? My life's complicated enough as it is, Mr. Cortez. I don't even know what I'm doing here. Answers. You want, you need answers. You keep telling me that, but you never give me any answers. Just more questions. Like, who's out to get you? What's going on with me? How come you know so much about me? I plan to answer all your questions today, April. By the time you go to sleep tonight, your world will have changed. And nothing will ever be the same. You're just being cryptic again. It's like soap opera sex. Lots of boring dialogue, and when they finally go to bed, everything's dark and covered by blankets. You want the full Monty, then? Come with me. Come outside. No more talk. I will show you the truth. I, I don't know that uh, that having this sex outside is probably as good a place as any. At least there's no one around to see, except rats. To see what? Stand back, senorita. What for? What are you doing? Why, Alice? I'm sending you through the looking glass. What? What is that? Please tell me it's a hologram. It's a mirror to reflect your dreams. I don't see anything, just 
white. Oh, you have to step through. Step through that? Oh no, I don't think so. This is a moment of decision, April. All time, past and present, revolves around this moment. The destiny of worlds is in your hands. But you must make the choice on your own. La vida es corta. You must decide how to live it best. Um... I'm not sure what I should do. I understand. It's a difficult decision. Because whatever you do, your life will change forever. So take your time. Think about it. Don't rush into a decision you're not ready to make. I don't know if I need this little guy again, but uh, if the game is letting me take him, then I'm gonna take him. I'm gonna take that. It's a perfect fit. I'm so clever, I could just die. Um. I think that's about it for here. Hey, Mazzy, how's it going? Uh, let's see, savings F2. I'm gonna go ahead and save right now and uh, let's see what lies beyond. Are you ready to step through the looking glass? All right, I'll do it. Vamos, enter the light. Don't say that, it sounds too ominous. Just tell me what's gonna happen. You're about to take the first step on the longest journey of your life. Oh, title drop. But don't worry, I'll be waiting right here. I must be insane to do this. Yes, it's pretty much a given. Oh, I'm back in control. Oh, so now I have to. All right. It's Cortez. Yeah, sure, it's Cortez. Um, I remember kind of half-heartedly poking at the dig a very long time ago, and I never got anywhere in it. Oh, I almost forgot. Oh, now you tell me. When you're ready to come back. Pay a visit to a friend of mine called Westhouse, Brian Westhouse. Is he in the west of town? A surly tree. I feel like the video is having a bit of a moment right now. There's 1999 3D CG. Fire Condios, child, and may the balance protect you. Cortez? Yeah, he ain't here. I have a bad feeling about this. Wait, what was the name Cortez told me to remember? Westhouse? Brian Westhouse? I think that was it. Cortez said to look him up when I wanted to go home. Well, I want to go home now. And this is a pretty weird place that we found ourselves here with the uh, apostles. Uh, well, I don't know what this is. 
April Ryan, you have got to get past yourself. I was wondering if she had anything different to say. Kind of annoying to get through this part because, like, this, like, step by step having to go through. Enormous satin drapes. Quaint, and they go with the general decor of the place. Oil lamps. Or whatever their magical equivalent may be called. <laughs> yep, the, the the age of very triangular. The doors moves. are closed. Uh, is there anything else other than the priest? I think that's. It. He looks like some kind of priest. This priest looks like a priest. Clearly, he is doing his job right. Hello? Hi. Uh. Et tu? Emilie, tu va? Uh Ne you know? Tu van Sav Ken Tu Vu Ken Alar Et Tu is Stark Mele Ithira Ton Maris Ton Uh smile and not Aku tu fata Se quandare Ken is tale. Tom. Uh huh. Uh. Where's Cortez? To Tone e Ken. To Ken Vernilia Fata Tim Tu Vermilian Tom. I wasn't asking about Tim, I was asking about Cortez. Very, very important difference there. A cool candy. Good. Uh, Niranton a voch. Sank al coda magic. Torante salhe naven all tongue. I'm starting to understand. Av orta e beginning parasimtin you. You have thiesa e magic e sara. E the knowledge, aritua ya ai tue by generations e umani, knowledge of all tongue. You know, I I really I really gotta hand it to the VA for this, just seamlessly switching between whatever this language is and English. Now you have allowed the magic to enter your heart and the knowledge of all tongue, ever-present but dormant, to guide your ears and your tongue. I... I understand you. You speak English? Why didn't you just tell me straight away? <laughs> no, child. I do not speak English. I speak Naven, all tongue, the common language of Arcadia. Arcadia? Wait a second. How did I get here? What is this place and who the hell are you? Oh, my manners have abandoned me yet again. I'm afraid my preoccupation with ancient texts and the company of my fellow fathers have left me unequipped with the grace of social intercourse. Meaning what? That I have been rude. My name, dear child, is Tobias Grensret, and I am the Vestrum of the Sentinel. The Order of the Balance. We are the fathers. Ah, uh, okay. I'm April. April Ryan. I take it this is your first shift, your first passage through the Divide? I have no idea what you're talking about, but I guess this is my first shift. I just... Then I will explain everything. Someone must. 
You are without guidance, without a mentor? Mentor? There's this guy Cortez. He assisted me, told me about magic and truth and dreams and portals. Crazy stuff. Well, it seemed crazy at the time, although now I don't... Cortez? Ah, yes, Cortez. Very good, very good. Then come, let us proceed. Let me show you Mercuria, the grandest city of all ages. Darbok and Jala, the Tanagra. Yes, indeed. I'm not gonna lie, this is kind of rad. Explore Mercuria, April. See the sights, meet the people, and then, when you are ready, return to the temple. I will answer whatever questions you may have then. Where am I? Oh, okay. Over here. It's a little easier, like, with, uh with these settings to tell where April is because like anyone who just kind of is part of the background sorry I'm in the way let me get out of the way for you lady but like anyone who's like in the background like these guys are extremely pixelated but like anyone who is in motion basically uh, has a 3D model which is um, very smoothed out by ScumVM. The whole fountain's been carved in one piece from a granite-like material. Very impressive. And there's the stalls. There is the city. More of the city. Okay, well, let's check the stalls first. Also, why, why is it that uh, one of the first things you learn in, uh, in Spanish is, where's the library? Because, like, if you're still learning Spanish, you're not going to do a whole lot with a library, let's be real. In a world without the screen, that's what passes for entertainment, and it's pretty darn good. I always take the opportunity to check out live theater. What a sorry looking bird. Hey, you don't look too polished yourself, lady. Oops, I didn't know you could talk. Didn't look as if you could talk either. Damn. The sass from this bird. A cups game merchant. Cups handler. I wonder if that's supposed to be anybody in particular, or just any old head. Want to test your skill and perception with a game of cups? There are prizes to be won! Mind if I ask you a couple of questions? Time is money, so make it quick. What do you know about Vestrum Tobias? Vestrum Tobias, eh? The High Priest of the Sentinel himself. Did you know they call themselves the Fathers? What a joke. When was the last time they did anything for us, the people? No. They are only interested in sticking with their outdated customs and keeping their secrets under lock. I'm getting more and more inclined to listen to these new people. The Vanguard. Their ideas appeal to me. They may be radical, but we're past due for a change. Only thing I don't wholly approve of is their alliance with the Tyrant. 
filthy, dangerous people. But the Vanguard seem to have them under control, so I'm not too worried. I wish they wouldn't allow them into the city, though. He does sound like I've heard him before. The Vanguard party, that never goes wrong. How do you get along with your neighbor? The maps merchant? We've faced each other for six years now, every single day, and he never speaks a word to me except to insult me. Nose high in the sky, calls me a charlatan, as if he's the guardian himself. You know good oversized bag of wind? Damn. Do you know anything about Stark? Not much. I'm not too sure if I even believe in the place. I mean, you hear the stories and you read the books. Uh, well, I don't, but some do. A place where there's no magic, only science? Sounds like a bloody paradise, doesn't it? I mean, with my, um, <clears throat> skills, I could make a killing in a place like that. What's Arcadia like? What a queer question that is. What's the world like? It's big, for one. And too expensive. Yeah, and they is. should ban Dalmari women from gambling because I swear they have a second sight. Thanks. Now, how about a game of cups? What can I win? Well, there's coin, of course. Double your bet or choose from a wide variety of exotic prizes. Like this antique Dalmari canter from Guienne. A superb replica of Mount Tyrannae, cast in pure, solid iron. A magic walnut from the once glorious island kingdom of Anciel. And this, um, unique bird. Get me out of here! Keep your beak shut, you scraggly piece of... <clears throat> and he talks! Great for feasts and for the amusement of infants! He's our top prize! A real keeper! I mean, I guess we need the bird. How do I play? You put your coin down on the table. I put a cup on top of it and shuffled it around with the other two cups. And all you have to do is guess which one hides your coin. And remember, no magic used, and none allowed. This amulet right here will light up if you use magic. Then you'll be banned. For life! Oh no. I can't imagine a worse thing in the world than being banned from the, uh, from the cups game. Sorry, but I'm broke. May the balance bring coin to your pocket, young lady, so that you may return to me and waste, uh, invest it in a game of cups. My intuition tells me... Maps! ...that he sells maps. Good talk. Maps! I got maps! Can I interest you in a map, miss? Top-notch, hand-drawn in quality ink by skilled sunriders. Ain't no better in all the Northlands. How much are your maps? Ah, that depends, miss. I got a very nice one here of the Border Mountains for only six harens, fresh from the quill of a sunrider. Maps, get your maps here. Do you sell maps of the city? Can't help you there, miss. The Guild of Tourism has monopoly on city maps. I can tell you're not from around here, or you'd know that. Got tons of maps of all the Northlands, though, from the city of Tyron to the Bay of Fire. Maps! I don't know. It, it kind of sounds like maps is his tick word. Where can I find the Guild of Tourism? They're closed for the holidays. Sure, that makes sense. Mind if I ask you a couple of questions? Yes, maps! <laughs> Yes, maps! Do you know Vestrum Tobias? Everyone knows Vestrum Tobias, girl. He's been an important part of this city for as long as I can remember. What can you tell me about him? 
The Vestrum is an honorable man, but a conservative one, and I don't know if he still has the best interests of the people at heart. Sometimes I think he worries too much about custom. The Sentinel have been our so-called protectors and keepers of the balance for so long we don't even think of it anymore. But now that the Vanguard are introducing a new way of thinking, new philosophies, I'm afraid the Sentinel will find their power diminish before too long. Their resistance to change will be their downfall. Mark my words, their downfall for certain. And Tobias, honorable man that he is, will be remembered as the captain who went down with his ship. <laughs> it makes you want to buy an obnoxious sea lanterns. How do you get along with your neighbors? The cup's handler? Stay away from him, miss. He takes great joy in robbing people's purses. You can't beat him, not without magic. And he doesn't allow magic at his table. How would he know if I did use magic? Oh, he's got one of those blasted talismans. They're always digging up magical artifacts in Chagagriel, and they sell them to dogs like him for a silver coin or two. Get a proper job, you son of a mole! I thought for a second you was gonna yell maps at him. What do you know about Stark? Land of wonders, strange customs, and machinery. Ah, to be in Stark. I'd give my right leg. Well, perhaps not my right leg as such. You really need two sturdy legs to stand on in this business, or you'll find yourself... Um, uh, yes, uh, a grand place indeed, free of this blasted, chaotic, unpredictable magic does no good to anyone. Now, machines built by man, controlled by man, in servitude of man, that's the future, isn't it? Yes, the Vanguard may be a little unorthodox in their methods and teachings, but they're right about one thing. Stark and Arcadia belong together, not apart. I don't know how good machines are. What's Arcadia like? What can I say about a whole world, girl? It's a beautiful place for sure, but we're stuck in the past. We don't look ahead, not like our cousins in Stark. Magic is all well and good, but it won't bring our world into the modern age, and Arcadia is untamed. It's wild and unpredictable. Good for the map business, sure, but not so good for productivity and expansion. No, some people may consider our world a paradise. The Sentinel, for one, they'd prefer to keep it just the way it is. Me, I'd like to see some changes, and fast. Thanks for your help. Maps! <laughs> maps! No maps for me today, thanks. Fair enough, miss, but don't expect me to come running to your aid if you ever get lost in Riverwood. Without my maps, you'll probably end up a mole's dinner or worse. Maps! Maybe I should just call you... like... Hmm. There's so many map websites, I don't know which one to pick. Most of them are pretty corporate though. Maps! Uh, I think we've In a pretty world much, without uh, the screen. It's a talking bird. Pretty much exhausted our options around here. Let's, let's check out the rest of the city. Alright, now you have the marketplace, we got the city gates, and that's pretty much it for now. Those guys must be part of the City Watch. They look a hell of a lot more intimidating than the Newport cops, despite the lack of an exoskeleton. This guy's selling musical instruments. 
Most of these I don't even recognize. But he's got a drum in there and what looks like half a guitar and a couple of dried rabbit carcasses. Ugh. I know what that sound effect was supposed to be, but it was sure something. Stout guardians of the city. Wooden, but stout. And that blue fire is way cool. No, it's probably actually pretty hot. Um... He's selling musical instruments. No kidding. Oh, okay. I'm not in the market for an instrument at this particular moment. Still, good to know where to get one in case of a musical emergency. Now, we, we've taken care of a musical emergency. We did the monkey. This lady's selling fresh fish. I've never seen fish like this before. But if it's wet and has fins, fish it is. The walls look ancient. Mercury must be at least as old as anything back in the real, uh, in my world. Had to catch yourself there, didn't you? This world is just as real as anything we've ever experienced. This guy's selling lobsters, crabs, eels, and... What the hell is that purple thing? That is so not appetizing. Pretty decent view. Yeah, the it took me it took me a, a little bit to get through, but uh, I honestly just got lucky. I just kind of pulled out the monkey and was like, "Let's put this here. Does this work? Oh crap! It does. Okay." Blue fire. It's either propane or magic. I'm guessing the latter. And, the, and then it started going, Hey, hands up, spread your legs, and do the bonk. <laughs> That's just, I, I love that delivery. It's a lighthouse, much like the ones we have at home, except this one, of course, burns a blue fire. The size there. of these galleons is truly breathtaking. And there are dozens of dozens of them, not to mention a number of smaller vessels. Mercury must be a very important and very busy port. Small pier. I mean, April is a woman of culture, more or less. I wouldn't feel too comfortable about sailing anywhere in that. It's like a toy boat for children. Yeah, I'm sure this guy would not approve of you saying that. It's a lighthouse. The blue fire's burning bright, a safe beacon for weary sailors, and a magnet for flowery prose. Big boat. Hey, buddy. The old man and the, uh, ocean? Looks like a lifetime at sea has left his tracks on him. You might want to consider waiting till you be out of earshot before you badmouth me. Damn. Just soliloquies are non existent here. Hello, old man. I got me no treasure, and I got me no map of no buried treasure. I just be an old sailor with no ship, so leave us be. What are you doing? Mending nets, of course. What it look like I be doing? Not well versed in maritime customs. Matter what? Ah, yes, mean sea life, dear nut. Ah, the smell of the salty sea, the lapping of waves on your ship, 
the spray of cold water on your face, plump maidens in every pot. I, I tell yous, I be having stories about the sea. Care to share some of your maritime stories with me? Matter what? Ah, tales of the sea, right? Sure, sweetie, I be happy to. Now, what stories be I wanted to hear then? Like, we just established the fact that he doesn't know the word maritime, so maybe don't use the word maritime. You're not going to gain anything, April Ryan. Any tale of your exciting adventures will do. I, I be having plenty of tales to tell. There be the tale of me adventures in the Bakshivan Empire, if he'd be interested. It'd be a tale of grand romance, just up your alley, be sure of it. Sure, that sounds like a fine story. Aye, it'd be near on fifty years ago that I was a mate on a sturdy old lady called the Three-Legged Whore. Do I want to know? The what? What do I be saying? She was called the Thrifty Horse, she was. Aye, that be her name. The Whistle What's It. Ah, uh, you don't remember the ship's name, do you? Ah, uh, anyways, I be a young mate then, and we be anchored in Mount Herba, the grand western port of the once glorious Bakshivan Empire. I be having ship leave until the following evening, and it be me first visit to that exotic and dangerous port. So I sits out to have a look around. Now, bear in mind that Monterba be ruled by a mock, like all large Bakshivan cities. In principle, the mock be having to report to and pay half of all taxes to the emperor in Port Altaban. But with the Bakshivan Empire having all but crumbled into pieces, the provinces do be having the power to do pretty much as they be wanting. Err, uh, and so I sets out on me own that day to explore the city. Now, bear in mind that all the cities of the Southlands and that be well, the adventures in the once glorious empire of Bakshiva. And that be how I meet me bird bird. How I see Deuce and the romance the Mock's daughter. How I be chased from Mount Herba by the Mock's soldiers. And how I be the first man to walk across the desert of Shangagriel, the wastelands. And how I be getting this awful rash on. Ah, girl, you do not be sleeping, do you? What? 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 Sleeping? N no, 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 no. Just concentrating really hard. Uh-huh. Err. Good story, though. Solid. Solid material. Ever considered doing a book? Aye, but the agents in Marcuria be bloodthirsty vampires with no thought but to milk your life's blood. Oh. So they take an outrageous commission, then? No. They actually be bloodthirsty vampires with a penchant for biting your neck when you ain't be looking. Well... Huh. Hmm. Any dang way. What have you got in that chest? I'm using the keyboard what to pick chest? Things. The one you're sitting on. Oh, that be no chest, girl. That be me stool. I me stool, carved into the uncanny likeness of a chest. But what's in it? No priceless treasure, that be for sure. Nothing, nothing at all. It be empty. No, really. What's in the chest? Oh, live snakes. Aye, sneaks that'll bite your face off before you have time to jump. Better leave them be, then. Mm-hmm. I'm still curious about that chest. 
Right, right. I be telling yous, curse the balance, girl. You never give up, do you? I be having no real treasure in here, like I told ye. But it be where I keep me personal articles and things I be picking up now and then on me travels. And me bed, it's where I be keeping me bed before I be losing him. I be a stupid, stupid old man. He be my best friend. I ain't nobody else around to talk to, you see, on account of him being a talking bird. And you keep him inside the box? What happened to your talking bird? I be he cheated out of him. I, ah, that, bird. that cups handler on the marketplace, be cheating me in a full game of cups, and I be having to give me bird up to try to win me money back. And what happened? He be taking me bird when I be choosing the wrong cup. I my best friend taken from me. Cash to be the balance. I be all lonesome now. The worst part is that me bird is now a prize to be won. A prize in a cups game. Beat the handler thrice and you win a prize of your choice, me poor bird. What's your bird's name? Bird. <laughs> oh. It's a real original. And I'd better get boy. going. Ah, you young'uns who be always running around. Everything be so important. He's been having no time to sit down and take a breath. So go. Be not wasting your time here with me. Of course, I have to wait until he goes back into his idle animation before I can actually move. Oh. It's a small ship or boat. I don't have a difference. Is there a difference? I think mostly if it's big, it's a ship. I don't know. If it ships things, then it's probably a ship. Assorted cargo. It looks like it's shipping this cargo, so it's probably a ship. That's your deal. Judging by his ungainly stance, I'd say he's a mariner pining for the sea. Ahoy there, matey! Pardon? Isn't that how you sailors greet each other? No. <laughs> what do you say then? Hello. Usually, hello. And if it's sunny, nice day for it. We might even try a how are you today then, if we're feeling adventurous. But never, ever, ahoy. This is valuable information. Aye, matey, that it be. Why aren't you out at sea? Do you see the sail on that barge over there? Yes. Is it flapping? What? Is it flapping? Is the sail flapping in the wind? Um, no. And why is that then? Because... because it's not windy? Exactly. Well, can't you just use oars or something? Oh, what an excellent idea. Now, why didn't we think of that? Of course, oars. By Jaws' stunted left arm, that's it. Why have we been moored to the dock for a month with our merchandise dropping in value when we could have just rowed our way to Guillen? Are you being sarcastic? Sarcastic? Me? What in Jal's name makes you think that? Boy, you just cannot turn that off, can you? How long's it been since the last wind? Near a month. Ever since that accursed alchemist put some kind of spell on the wind. The Mojal be cursed if I know why. But it's a bloody catastrophe. I've sent some good people of mine up north to deal with him. But not one has returned. Now the A. Reed High Council speak of sending an entire army platoon to sort him out. 
but I'm afraid that just might piss him off. <laughs> Ever since the wind crystal shattered. Who's this alchemist who cast a spell on the wind? I believe his name is Clax. Roper Clax. Lives in a bloody rock somewhere up north, beyond Riverwood. Thanks for the chat. Aye. Well, I mean, it, it is the 90s, so there is time for clocks. Um, I don't think you have anything else to say, do you? Because you just kind of booted me out of the entire uh, dialogue tree. Rover, Rover x death clocks. Okay. Um, I think we've seen pretty much everything at this point. Send some random dudes to defeat a guy powerful enough to stop the wind from blowing for more than a month and they didn't come back. Who could have seen that coming? Man. This is, this is like jewel levels of sass happening, maybe even higher. Oh, we got an, another location. Oh, it's just the pier. Um, I don't think there's anything that we haven't seen at this point, so let's head back to the temple. I'm sure we'll see the bird again. Don't worry about it. Excuse me, Vestrum Tobias? Tobias. Just call me Tobias, please. I require no ceremony from a distinguished guest such as yourself. Did you enjoy the sights? I don't know. I'm... overwhelmed. Walking around out there, seeing with my own two eyes things that can't possibly exist. I kept thinking, it's all a dream. I'll wake up at any moment now and everything will return to normal. But then I realized, I'm still here. It's real. I can touch it. I can smell it. Oh, you know what? That good. It doesn't make sense. Nothing makes sense here. Magic, alien creatures, parallel worlds. Don't believe in those things. I don't believe in fairy tales. In your world, in Stark, there is no room for magic. That is, and always has been, the curse of science, the fallibility of logic and order. They leave no room for the imagination. If it does not fit into the narrow perception of the laws of nature that your world adheres to, it's a fairy tale. But then, magic has its downsides, too. It's unpredictable. It invites chaos. It puts the balance in peril in a way that science alone never could. I keep hearing about the balance, and about Stark, and Arcadia, and... This is probably gonna sound strange to you, but I'm clueless. I have no idea what this place is, or what I'm doing here, or... All I know is that something strange is happening, and... In my world, I guess. I had dreams, and the dreams felt so real, and then things started happening in real life, too. Things that shouldn't, couldn't happen, and I... I think I will begin at the very beginning. I believe that is why you were sent here, to learn, to understand, to see for yourself. Like you said, you cannot believe in this place. Well, you will. After you have learned the truth, you will. Come with me, and I will tell you the story of Earth as your books never have. And when your eyes and ears are open to the truth, perhaps your mind will follow. We can only hope. Come. You'd best start believing in fairy tales, Miss Ryan. You're in one. This is the true story of the balance, as observed by the Sentinel, the Order of the Balance. The Fathers. The Sentinel Minstrum committed this story to the pages of the scriptures and to these temple walls thousands of years ago. 
so that coming generations could learn and understand their past and their future. The wall paintings we are looking at became known as the murals of the balance, and it is through these images that I will recount our common history to you, April Ryan. The story begins and ends here, with this mural. Ages ago and in ages to come, the Earth was one, and magic and science existed side by side in nature and in all people. There was balance, and there was harmony. You're saying there was just one world then? One world, one Earth. Magic and science in balance with each other, within each and every living creature. The power to make the stars dance and to create life itself was within our grasp. But then, humankind began to exploit this divine power of two, and they saw fit to use it for their own selfish purposes. The balance of the cosmos was in peril. This is literally sounding like the plot to Final Fantasy Unless XIV. something was done, unless man was humbled and learned to fear the power he wrought over cosmos, the twilight of chaos would fall upon Earth. It had happened before, in distant times and on distant worlds, and it would happen again. And every man, woman, and child of every people and every race would be devoured by the coming apocalypse. We were given a visitation then. The drag kin, having lived among us for untold generations, rose to offer their guidance and assistance in preserving the balance on our world. The drag? I think I've heard that name before. Drag kin, dragon, dragons. Whichever name they go by, they remain the eternal servants and custodians of the balance. There were four of them here on Earth, and of the four, one who would found the order of the balance, the Sentinel. The first Minstrum were instructed that magic and science would have to be separated before the balance collapsed and brought untold disaster. Earth would have to be split in two equal parts. Arcadia and Stark, magic and science, chaos and order. The first sentinel were counted thirteen, six scientists, six magicians, and one who was between, the drag kin, our mentor, our custodian, our learned guide. Both magic and science were needed to perform this most difficult of tasks, to split a world in two, to create two worlds from one. Wasn't the use of that kind of power dangerous to the balance? Yes, and so for this purpose, they built a tower to channel their powers and focus them on the divide that they would create. The kin had brought a disc with them, a disc forged in the fire of their world. Placed at the base of the tower and the epicenter of the divide, the disk and the tower would become one, a conduit for the flow of magic and science. At the appointed hour, the Thirteen came to the tower and with them a woman whose destiny was decided by the purpose to which she had been born. She would be the first guardian, the human protector of the balance who would stay in the tower for a thousand years to watch over the two worlds and to ensure that the flows of magic and science were always equal. And so the ritual began. One world was to become two, separated by the balance, and each world visible to the other only by way of dreams. Who was ushered into which world was not an arbitrary choice, nor one taken lightly. For the magical creatures, the choice was simple. They had to go to Arcadia. Their kind would not survive in Stark. But for others, families were torn apart, lovers separated and friends lost for all eternity. Encircled by the Twelve and the One, and the One who would be Guardian, 
The disk at the base of the tower began to spin faster and faster as more and more power flowed through it until it was a blur. Darkness enveloped the tower, but the disk glowed brighter and brighter. Reality turned, and in one moment, a new reality had been created and two new worlds born. In the tower there was silence. The original disk had disappeared, and in its place was a smaller counterpart, a similar yet different disk. Around and outside the tower the world looked different. They were now between Stark and Arcadia, between reality and dream. This was the realm of the Balance and of the Guardian, and it would be her home for the next 1,000 years. The one who was kin picked up the disc and said, This disc is a counterpart to the original disc, which has now become this realm, and the key to which has been split and divided in four. The key is the disc, and the disc is this realm. This mystified the Twelve, and the one who was kin continued, Know only this. The Guardian's realm cannot be broken unless the disc is broken. But nor can it be repaired without the disc being repaired. The four pieces that is the key will be given to the six of you who are to be taken to Arcadia for safekeeping. Yet the key will never be complete, he went on, without the precious stones that adorn each piece. I will keep one, and my fellow kin, the three others. Wait, so you have six Should four, the day come when this realm must people? be repaired, or the world reunited, and that day will come, you will assemble the disc, and the kin will come together one last time. With that, six of the thirteen went to Arcadia, and six to Stark, and the one who would be guardian ascended to the throne. Witness the mural, where her dreams and hopes, her very soul, were locked away in the disk. In service of the balance, these traits were nothing but barriers. Through new eyes, the imbalance between the worlds was as clear as the stars themselves to the guardian, and with one thought, she channeled chaos from Arcadia and logic from Stark into the disk and redistributed the power wherever it was needed. A new era had begun. The era of the Guardian. God damn it, Mazzy. After they left the tower, two of the Drakkin went to Stark, the other two to Arcadia. The six who came to each world started what is now known as the Sentinel, the Order of the Balance. But while in Arcadia the Sentinel thrived, in Stark they did not. In Stark the memories of magic and the balance could not survive in the face of the new reality of natural laws of logic and of science. And soon, very soon, Arcadia became nothing more than legend, a myth, tales of fairies to recount to impressionable children and stories to frighten and entertain around a fire. And while Dream still brought sights and sounds of Arcadia to those asleep in Stark, they were discounted as mere dreams and nothing more. So that's it? We forgot about our past and about Arcadia? And that's the way things are? Then what's wrong with that? And why does magic from Arcadia seem to have begun leaking through to Stark? That is another long story. But I can tell that you are tired of stories, and so I shall be brief. As I told you, while in Arcadia, the Sentinel grew in numbers and in strength. In Stark, while flourishing for a brief time, they were soon diminished and powerless. Some of the Stark Sentinel did not take kindly to this, and they berated the Arcadian Sentinel for their politics and teachings. The Stark Sentinel wanted people to work towards reunification, while their brothers did not. So the inevitable soon came to pass, and the Stark Sentinel parted ways with their Arcadian brothers and named themselves the Vanguard. And while at first their philosophy was not so different from ours, over the years it changed radically. The Vanguard wanted the Divide torn down, 
the worlds reunited, and the return to what they called the Glorious Ages, when humankind could control the forces of cosmos. But first they needed their own servant in charge of the balance, their own guardian. Now, every 1,000 years, a new guardian took the place of the old one, because no one can be separated from their souls for any longer than a thousand years. I mean, obviously. Every 1,000 years, a new guardian was born. The balance provided the seed from which a new fruit grew. But now, it has been 200 years since the previous guardian, the 12th guardian, was to be replaced. Every new child born to the balance has been taken away by the vanguard to be studied in an attempt to control them. In every instance so far, they have failed. But the Twelfth Guardian could wait no longer. Only a short time ago, the disk in the tower shattered, and the Guardian left his throne. The balance is now untended, and we have yet to find a new Guardian. Unless we do so, the Vanguard may get their chance. And they may be able to place their own puppet on the throne to rule the balance according to their principles. And this we cannot allow. It will mean the end of Stark and Arcadia, and the dawn of an era of chaos. Now do you see? I understand the history. I can even accept it. But I don't understand why I'm here and what Cortez wants with me. The balance is in peril, April. The Guardian has abandoned his tower. He has disappeared and there is no one to take his place. He must be reinstated to protect the balance until a new guardian may be found. And what can I do? I'm nobody. I've just been having a lot of bad dreams. You are a strong shifter. I have not seen your like in my lifetime. A shifter? Someone capable of opening doors between worlds, a shift. A portal between the realms of Stark and Arcadia. Are you kidding? I didn't do anything. Cortez was the one who opened the... shift, and he just waved his hands around in the air. I don't think I'd be capable of opening a portal even if I had a magic wand. Only a shifter's own power can allow her to travel. No one else can do this for her. Cortez only channeled your power to aid you. He would not be able to step through the shift himself. Even if that's true, I don't have any control over my... talent. Is you? Not yet. But in time you will. How else do you intend to travel back to your world? God, I hadn't even thought about that yet. Can't you help me? I'm afraid not. Even if I could shift, I would not be able to channel through you like Cortez did. So, I'm on my own? If you have any questions, I will do my best to answer them. But aside from that... Yes. Yes, you are. That's so not cool. No, it has been unseasonably <clears throat> warm. If you don't mind, I will return to my studies now. Thank you for listening to an old man and his long stories. N no thank you. It's starting to make a little bit of sense now. That is good news. Come see me again if you have any more questions. Alright, thanks, Elidibus. We're gonna go prevent the Aethermal Calamity from happening now. Uh, we, we, we ended with the Rubber Ducky puzzle yesterday. Oil lamps, or whatever their magical equivalent may be called. When say I was in tears, but you know. <sighs> Hydration achieved. Um so now we gotta figure out. Okay, we gotta figure out stretching and posturing. Yeah, 
<sighs> Big old instructions in the chair. Uh, man, yeah, now we gotta figure out how the hell are we gonna get back to Stark. Um, actually, let's go, let's go talk to, uh, to Vesperia, what's his face? Winksink, huh? Okay, um. Give me a minute. Excuse me. I was gonna ask if uh, if I could borrow five bucks, but uh, apparently that's not a question. Do you know a man named Brian Westhouse? Westhouse? That old goat? Yes, unfortunately. What would you with him? I need to find him. I do not know where he lives. I hear somewhere on the outskirts of the city by the sea, but I cannot tell you any more than that. Well, that's, uh, that's a lead. Who'd know about West House? His whereabouts? I do not understand what you would with him. He is rude, uncultured, and ignorant. Cortez told me to look him up. Well, I do not know where he lives or frequents, but someone at the market may. He trades merchandise there, and I think he collects maps of the Northlands. Interesting. What do you know about Cortez? Your mentor? What has he told you about himself? Not much. Nothing, in fact. He's a complete mystery to me. To learn something about someone, the best way to go about it is to ask them yourself. There is nothing I can do to enlighten you. But who is he? He is who he is. What he is. If he has not told you himself, then perhaps he does not wish you to know. It would be improper for me to divulge his secrets. You're as bad as he is. No offense. It's just frustrating. I understand. The next time you see him, tell him what you have told me. Maybe he will tell you the truth, maybe he will not. It is his choice to make. Do you mind if I ask you some questions about Arcadia? I will try my best to answer any question you may have, April. Let me get through this, uh, this, uh, dialogue tree and I'll get to that winksing. What's the history of Arcadia? There is so much I do not know where to begin. In truth, it would be wiser to ask someone else, unless you wish to know about the Fathers, the Balance, or Mudhoppers. Mudhoppers? My secret passion. I study them. They are a most fascinating species. Most fascinating indeed. But I am not practically versed in the intricacies of history, I am sorry to say. Well, nice to find out that you have a special interest. What about Mercuria? What's Mercuria like? I have lived in this city all my life, and still it amazes me what a diverse, exciting, and wonderful place it is. Many have called Marcuria the Jewel of the Northlands, and they are right. But it is a diamond in the rough. A city this size can never be flawless. There are always shadows, and people who hide in them. Lately the shadows have grown and darkened, and I fear for the future. But Marcuria is still a wonderful place to live. What else can you tell me about Marcuria? Marcuria is the capital of Irid, the unified country, and we are located on the southern coast of the Northlands, halfway between Tyran and Khorasan. Between the Snapjaw and the Gaintby, some might call it. Between the Embers and the Fire. Yet democracy and peace have reigned for thousands of years now, and although relations may at times be strained with our tyrant neighbors, the High Council are masters of diplomacy. And Lord Igvan Delen is a firm and just chief counselor of the Iredan flag. Tell me a little about Ired. 
I read means both unification and assembly in Haitung, and many still call I read the unified country, even though it is an age and a half since the lands of the north joined together in alliance. I read stretches from the plains of Nedra in the north to the Great Sea in the south and from the territories of Tyran in the west to the thick woodlands in the east. It is populated by humans and Dolmare, Tyran and a number of other races. It is even said that a tribe of Venar have a ring of trees in Riverwood, though I am not sure that is anything but a myth. So, what I'm getting from this is... It's just fucking Erezy, isn't it? What are the Northlands? The Northlands is a collective term for all the lands north of the Great Sea and south of the border mountains including Irede, Tyran, and Khorasan. Before, however, the word Northlands was used to describe this entire continent including the territories north of the mountains and the icy waste beyond that. Some still prefer the latter interpretation of the name. And to the people of the Southlands, Anyone hailing from north of the Great Sea is a Northlander regardless. Thanks for the information. I'm glad I could assist you. Hmm. I don't know that I've explicitly asked how to get back this story. Well, I kind of did during that entire dialogue. I think the the main thing is is gonna be we ha we gotta find West House. I'll see you later. You will if you say so. Then it must be true. The way you just said that is interesting. If you say so, then it must be true. So winksing, huh? My impression from what, like, I didn't have anything that I was going to particularly, like, I wasn't particularly hiding anything up until uh, Vespa here said, if you say so, then it must be true. So technically, I'm not really hiding it. It's just something that I came up with just right now. Um... But yeah, if you're saying it, then it must be true. And combined with the idea that uh, Tobias told us that we were one of the strongest shifters that uh, he has seen in his lifetime. Um, um, that really seems to kind of point to the fact that April is going to be doing some pretty out there crap um, the more that we are in Arcadia but just kind of imagine though like you're you're living in this basically dystopian technology future trying to figure out something to do with your life and all of a sudden it turns out that what you're meant to do with your life is go to you know the ma the the magic worlds and um pretty much forget everything that you ever knew and that's pretty much where we are at this point so in in the midst of april trying to figure out what uh what her life will amount to we're back to square one on that idea. Um, so yeah, let's talk to the map dude. He might know something about West House. Maps! Maps! I'm looking for Brian Westhouse. Briar West of House? It's not on any of my maps, and I've never heard of it. Maps! It's a man, not a place, Mr. Brian Westhouse. 
I would most certainly remember a name as queer as that, and I don't. Get your maps while they're fresh. Delicious, delicious maps. Mind if I ask you? Yes. Thanks for your help. Maps. Maps. Bye. Maps. Get your fresh maps here. Buy two, get the second one half price. Get them before they spoil. How about a game of cups today? Uh, you still don't have anything. Let's see what happens if I just agree to play. Okay, let's go. Just place your bet, <clears throat> investment, on the table and the game will begin. How about this ring? I feel like that might be the answer here. Which would be real bad, actually, if we um, forgot to take it. Nope, she is just running off in that direction. I was right about the ring at the very least. Is that gold? Only valid Arcanian coin in iron and other precious metals allowed at my table, young lady. Take your worthless gold elsewhere. Worthless gold. Gold? Worthless? Now I have heard everything. Okay, so that wasn't the answer. I got this push pin. Now. This sticky candy. The regular candy? No. Yeah, I guess I just don't have anything. Look at this photograph. No. The toy monkey? Okay, I don't think that we have anything that, uh... It's the traditional guy. game of cups in which you stand no chance of ever winning. The fun part is seeing just how much you can possibly lose in one go. Hmm. In a world without the screen. Yeah. It's a talking bird. Sure is. This is nickel backed valid currency. Here? Maybe it is. Who knows? I guess that we... I'm not in the market for an instrument at this particular moment. Still, yeah. good to know where to get one in case of a musical emergency. Maybe they'll have better luck being worth something in Arcadia. He's selling musical instruments. No, I responded to the wing sing. Let's ask around, see if anyone knows uh, Brian West House. Some good dried rabbit carcass. Hello, sir. Do you know anything about a Brian West House? Maybe you are a Brian West House. Who knows? Hello again, old man. Eh? Eh? It be you. Some weird motioning you're doing with your arms there, bud. I'd love to hear some more maritime stories. Sure, sweetie, I'd be happy to. What story you be wanting to hear now? 
Oh, I guess not. I'm all storied out for now. Thanks. Aye, ye tell me when you want more, right? See you later. If I not be dead, I. Castle Westinghouse. So what? What about this jerkwad? You know anything about West House? Nice day for it. Not really, no. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> well. Good conversation was had. Uh, we're back to this guy. And just like get back to there we go. There's there's the pier. Connection reset by pier. Longboat's nice, but where's the turtle ship? Well, the turtle ship was just literally a gigantic turtle. He's selling a variety of fresh shellfish and other, uh, delicacies. She's selling a variety of fresh fish. Those guys must be part of the city watch. They look a hell of a lot more intimidating than the Newport cops, despite the lack of an exoskeleton. Same thing. Those guys must be. Yeah. Stout guardians of the city. <laughs> Might need some help soon. Not quite yet. I'm not finding anything that I can particularly interact with here. Ah, uh -uh, they're awful. I'm not particularly hungry. <laughs> they're awful, but this one just I'm not particularly hungry. Hey, babe, I like your endoskeleton. What if I threaten you with a pushpin? Actually, let's threaten everyone here with a pushpin. Okay, pushpin in the head now. Everyone, a ring, a maps merchant, cup sandal, dumb care. Do you want Look at this candy now? Look at this photograph. I want my cash card. No? It's probably not the diary, is it? Can we get the, the dancer to do the monkey? Look at this foe! <laughs> I'm 
Mama Mia, Papa Pia, baby, got the diarrhea. Hmm. Right now, we our options as far as navigating the city are pretty limited. Wait a second. There's like a red spot over here, but I think there's just this red spot, which somehow ended up here for some reason. Pray for a dried rabbit carcass. I don't think I can do that, but we can try. Um. Nope. Would you like this terrible candy? It tastes like my mouthwash. You know what mouthwash is? Probably not. That is the clickiest mouse. I mean, it doesn't help that the mouse, like, the microphone is, like, right here, and the mouse is, like, right underneath, right underneath it. I would love to have the microphone closer to my face, but right now that's not an option. Actually, I wonder if this would help at all. There. I, I, this is probably not going to help, like, at all, but, um... Uh, I don't really do holiday streams. Uh, if you want some good Halloween content, then I would uh, recommend both The Real Zero and J-Pop for Life, who are going to be doing their uh, October things um, in about a month's time. With them saving because it, was, it would all obviously be Halloween. I mean, I guess, I guess if I follow my current schedule, then I will be streaming on Halloween. It's just that I don't really do spooky things. It's something that I don't mind watching, but it's not something that I really want to be doing. All right, um, I am open to suggestions at this point because I really don't know. Talk to the map guy. Marketplace. At least I was right about the map guy. It was just... He didn't really seem to know much about Brian West House. Maps! Yeah, you too, buddy. Mind if I ask you a couple of questions? Yes, maps! Thanks for your help. Maps! <laughs> Bye. Maps! Get your fresh maps See, there's here. There's literally two. nothing that I can ask him at this price. point.
And I tried pretty much all of my items on him. Go back to Gandalf. No, I don't want to talk to this guy. I want to go back to the marketplace. And then I want to go back to the temple. Excuse me. Why did what? Why did you turn just to turn? Who did you say I should see about West House? The map merchant at the market may know. There is one thing I must tell you, however. Few would know West House by his real name. In the city, he is known as the Rolling Man because of his strange two-wheeled vehicle. A most dreadful and dangerous contraption if I ever saw one. A bicycle? Perhaps. It has a grotesque appearance, much like the West House himself. I heard kind of a ding there. I'm gonna guess that that was a uh, story flag being set. I'll see you later. You keep telling me so, and I do believe you. All right, tell me about uh, tell me about the running man. Kill him. Maps. Yeah, you too, buddy. Can you tell me where the rolling man lives? Maybe, maybe not. Why? Because I need to find him. Sorry, guild rules. Uh, I'm not allowed to divulge any personal information about my customers. Maps! I really need to know where the rolling man lives. Sorry, can't do. Please? Pretty please? <laughs> no, 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 young lady. Don't give me that doe-eyed look. Don't. Ah, blasted be the balance. You're giving me that doe-eyed look, aren't you? I still can't tell you though. I got maps. You can't tell me that you got maps. You just did. Please tell me where the rolling man lives. No, oh, can't do, miss. Uh, I can't divulge personal information about my customers. Why do I have to keep harassing this guy in order to You're make late this person again? Here? And you know what else? You're fired. Give me back the delivery list and get your sorry blue skin elsewhere! Well... Hired hell. Bah! Never hire a Dolmari to do a human job. What are you gonna do now, without a delivery boy? I hire a new one, of course. Uh, blasted be the balance. That means I'll have to pay the damn fee to the Guild of Merchants, damnation! Maybe I could help you out. You? How? I'm quick, honest, and reliable. And I've got a lot of experience in the service industry. Hmm, perhaps a female errand boy. It could work if the Guild of Merchants don't find out. I won't tell them if you don't. Mind the pay is not much, only a single errand per delivery, plus whatever tip the customer may see fit to give you. I'll take the job, if you want me. Agreed. Maybe you'll even bring in some new business. Here's the delivery list for today and your first map. It's for the captain of the White Dragon. Nebeve, I think his name is. You'll find him in the harbor. Well, it definitely looks like we've been given oh, some... remember to have the customer sign the delivery list. The guild are sticklers for protocol. No signature, no money, no new jobs. Bye now. Maps! Fresh, detailed, life-saving maps! Delicious lifesavers. Anyway, it seems like we've been given a, uh, a bit of a direction here. 
that uh, we can follow in order to at the very least to get paid and maybe eventually find out where West House is. Uh, but we're gonna have to go on this first delivery right after the break so y'all can take a moment uh, get some to drink, go to the, bath the bathroom if you need to, stretch your arms, stretch your legs, stretch your teeth and in about 10 to 15 minutes we shall um, maps so, so to speak. So, I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> 